Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're gonna continue on this early 70s Rupp mini bike that we dragged out of a, I think it was like a shipping container on someone's property that, it was a basket case and we tore it all apart and never put it back together. So we are in the process of putting it back together. On the previous video, we kind of figured out what we had and got into getting the drivetrain, trying to get the drivetrain to function, which is what you see as far as the rear wheel, the, the jack shaft, the chain setup, engine parts, and we got that kind of squared away. So we have that going. And see what we got on the other side. Threw a tire on the back, bought new tires for it. But as you can see, we're just trying to scab stuff together and see what we have and what we don't have. So I ended up having to stop in the last video because we did not have a decent drive belt for it. And we we're trying to find a spring that was correct for the rear clutch. Tried making one out of, I think it was a, a seat spring for like a tractor but it's just way too heavy. Since then, I went and did a little bit of shopping. And we have, I'm not sure if they're the correct ones, but they are much more correct than we did have. We have a belt. I got another one coming. I think it might be a little bit skinnier from the old Comet clutches compared to the modern ones. And then a spring that should uh, possibly take care of that clutch setup. And while I was uh, contemplating on what to do for an engine in the drive setup, the original engine that came with it was that black Briggs that is on there. It's kind of beat up, pull starts all messed up. We went to my stash and we grabbed this original Briggs, probably a three horse. Has the right uh, shaft set up for it for the front clutch, but it is not threaded in the center. Now that it, not that we can't thread it. I'm like, oh yeah, we got another one. Let's go get that one. So I went back and grabbed that one. That one is threaded, but it has a stepped shaft on it. So that clutch is not gonna fit on that engine either. So between the three of them, we'll get one together. It just doesn't know it yet. So let's go get set up. Let's get back in the wrenching and continue on this project and hopefully get the engine to run and spin that back tire is my goal. My guess is we'll probably go with this one and we'll just raw parts off the other. But the problem with this one was trying to get the clutch set up to go fit on that was really screwed up. We already cleaned it up with a wire wheel and all that. So I'm gonna go take a little bit more time and probably take a file, clean up the groove on the inside of it. And I don't know, maybe some Emery will kind of polish this up. See if we can get this clutch set up to go on here. Cause this one's also threaded, so. Here's the center of that clutch. You can see the key that's in there. It's not even trying. I took a file and I kind of cleaned up the, the leading edge. I thought possibly somebody just whacked it with a hammer a hammer and peened it over doesn't seem to be the case though so I don't know if the, the width of it's slightly off because if you go over this is the other engine that we're going to use it went right on on this one well kind of right on. see the difference on that so hopefully a little bit of cleaning up we'll get that one to go Yeah, I don't think that one's going to work out for us just because of the fact that it's actually the depth of the key that's screwing us up how far down that tongue is going. Yeah, you can see the air gap it's trying to make above it. So the diameter of the shaft is okay. It's just how would we grind that in there? I mean, we could, but I think we're better off maybe trying to drill and tap the center of the other one that we worked with. Yeah, there's not much there, is there? You thought it would have been the same. drops of oil and say so we go risky we need to get her off a clutch crank her up the drill there you go. might have to go a little larger 
on the hole. We got it. Hopefully, I think after we clean those threads out. Just needed a better bolt, that's all. I think guys got it. Now we just need to polish our shaft up. Everybody likes a polished shaft. So. That's upside down. Nope. Had it right. Hmm. Shiny. Let's go see how the clutch fits on it. I don't know if that's supposed to be part of it. And like locked together, but it doesn't, it just kind of pops in there now. But there's nothing there to hold it on the shaft. So I grabbed a couple of washers before just so that when we bolt it together, something's going across those two surfaces. Anyway. There we go. And then the other half, we are missing. There's a bushing that goes on there. So that happens like that. We could probably get rid of one of those. Yeah. Because yeah, without it, it's just, you know, the ring's gonna go pop off of it. Nothing's gonna be there to hold it together. And there would be that, and then that gets a collar in the middle. I gotta go find it. That the belt rides over when you're kind of idling. Kind of idling when you're idling. Then as you spin up, this disc will walk out, pinch on the belt, and this is low speed. And as you get the belt travels further and further to the outside, the speed of the bike picks up, and the pulley on the back does the opposite. It gets pulled in and shrinks down on the other side. We'll get in that in a second. Let's go finish this up. It was right there. Yeah, that rides on there. As the belt goes over, it gives something to slip on or stay, stay still while the clutch is spinning. All right, so we need to get a longer bolt and a washer to hold all that assembly together. And then I guess we can probably play with the other clutch and get the spring on it, mount this motor, get rid of the carburetor and the, the uh, exhaust because we're not gonna use either one of those. We're gonna come up with our own stuff. So anything I'm worried about is there's a little bit of a gap, you know, about that much in between where the end of the shaft sticks out and where the hub is. And I got I doubled up washers. I'm just afraid that like over time they're gonna to want to kind of kick in a little bit and then loosen up. Plus, the pulley's constantly getting tension on one side, and this side is always open. The belt side has always got pressure pushing it apart. So I'm just a little. We'll just keep an eye on that if that wants to back off on us. That's my only uh, concern at the moment. All right, let's go get the muffler off and the gas tank out of the way. Sorry, loose. It still has a governor on it too. I'm not gonna use it. I think we're just gonna hook a throttle directly up to a carburetor. Governor is kind of like the cruise control in your car. You set it, say you set your car at 60, and you want it to just cruise at that speed. And then the car will give it the gas as it needs to. That's kind of like what a governor does. It wants to maintain an RPM no matter what the load is on it. So as you're going up a hill, it's going to give it more gas, maintain 60. Going down a hill, it's going to let off the gas and still maintain 60. And I got a little kill wire. That is when you let off the gas all the way. That's that on there. When you let off the gas all the way. It grounds out the coil, that's out. Let's go get a punch and a chisel. We'll, we'll try to tap that collar off of there. It's actually kind of okay if it doesn't come off because we'll just 
we'll cut it right there and we'll attach that other muffler to it. Let's see if it'll come out though. That's just a locking collar. Hopefully it'll twist. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a pair of uh, channel locks. Put it right there. For good measure. Save that for another project. I think it's just a piece of uh, pipe thread we can use to come out of there. All right, now that kill wire is off of there, let's see if we got spark on this one. I don't think we had before, but the throttle may have just been off. We're gonna go yank that pull starter apart anyway, but and get to the. Let's just see what we get. Come on now. Get on there. Now, still no spark. Let's get that pull start off and take a look at the points. Should just be three bolts holding it. So this is the uh, governor air vane. And it moves, the engine's air cooled, fan down here, air comes in here, comes up and exits across the cylinder head. So as the flow of air changes, it moves this uh, governor and that in turn is tied to the throttle and just kind of compensates the throttle to try to maintain a certain airflow, which is also a certain RPM. That's how they work. So we're gonna not use any of that. I'm not concerned about it. We're gonna pop that out, but we need to get down to the pull start. So we got to get the pull start apart, which has got four screws on it. Pull start, the magneto, four screws on it. We're gonna try to get this magneto off to get to the uh, points that are behind it. Cause I have a feeling they're corroded up. Let's go those four screws off that held the fan on, the uh, screen on rather. And this is essentially, it's just a big nut with a one way clutch in it for the pull start. So hopefully we can Let's undo that. There it goes. There's a set of ball bearings inside here. As this spins, they excel to the outside and allows it to ratchet in one direction, but not in the other direction when you yank on the pull start. All right, a little love tap. Should do it. And then under that cover right there is going to be a condenser and a set of points. Don't want to lose our key neither. Yeah, let's go take a peek at them. Generally, the tips of them just get kind of corroded. They look really clean, though. No matter what, we got enough parts to fix it. So, the other engine already has spark. Let's get you close in. Let's go see. I see some kind of like hair going across them. Let's go. Make sure they're closing. They close. They do look super clean though. Could be a bad coil too. So here's the wires that come in. You got one wire that runs up to the coil and then up to the plug. And then this was the kill wire. And again, sometimes if that's grounded, it'll get you. It all looks original. I don't think anybody's ever, I don't know. I don't know about that putty. I'm gonna go just quickly. We'll go run something over that surface. I don't have my meter with me. Usually I put a meter across. You could tell if it's got an open or a closed circuit, but we'll file that real quick 
and uh, see if we can get contact. It's not like you have to grind them to death. You're just trying to get any coating that's on them off. Just make sure that they close. And the gap looks about right too. I think it's supposed to be 20. Somewhere between 16 and 20, I'd say. All right, let's go pop that on real quick. We'll give her a spin and we'll make sure. I don't see anything going on there. I'm going to clean this off with a wire wheel. Looks like it's been rubbing. I see rub marks on it. And we're looking right there. See if we can spin it fast enough. There we go. She's back. Awesome. Got Spock. Let's get rid of this. We're not going to use it. It's just more something to be a pain getting in the way. I'm going to grab a little pair of pliers. We'll get these tabs down. It's really not much to it. Some of the other ones, some other engines, they're a little bit more elaborate. They're internal. Not on this one, though. Someone's having a party. There's fireworks in the background. Oh, there you go. Off with that. Uh, the kill wire, we'll leave that. We might hook that up to a kill switch. Let's go, let's go kind of tuck that. And I guess we could put the pull starter the rest of the way back together. I'm going to tighten that down a little bit. And we can put the pull start back on. We actually set this motor on the... Uh, bike and we'll set the belt set up on we'll get that where where they want to be <laughs> we can start figuring how we want to uh, fabricate the intake manifold we got actually we got to come up with a card too in the exhaust let's pull the dust out first but first <laughs> we gotta throw a little bit of gas down her see what she does right Should give us a little bit of fire. <laughs> the clutch came out too. Did you see it? I don't know if your angle was good. Nice. Done. Ripped out my screw. What if that clutch held up on the? On the bushing in the center it doesn't quite look like it went back all the way. No, the bushing's free. It looks like that should be. I wonder if we should pop that off, kind of take that apart a little bit, give her a quick little look, make sure the pieces behind here are doing what they're supposed to be doing. It just seems like it. That we just cycle it a couple times. I'm not sure. Ah, let's just fire it up again. It's more fun that way, right? We'll keep an eyeball on it. I think we already lost the screw in the back holding the engine down, so. If I throw it on the floor, so be it. Just don't catch it by the spark plug. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it looks decent. It looks like, like I said, eh. Yeah, see that last little bit there? That's what I was concerned about. Not that we can't figure it out and free it up, right? I would think when you have a belt on it too, the belt's gonna help try to push it back out. Third time's a charm. Yes, no. Eh. <laughs> Have a feeling we're going to be playing with that a little bit later. So the next thing was that that back clutch and the spring that we had on there, which just fell out of key. Yeah. And that. Look, that's what I was trying to make, but it was just way too heavy. And I'm guessing that this may be what we need. Is there a little hole for that to fall into? 
Maybe just like that, right? And that puts tension. How's that gonna line up with here? Just drop into one of them, I guess. Yeah. So we're gonna go put that setup on there. And that should be the back half of the punch. Once I get the key in it. So I'm gonna go struggle with that. You guys don't need to see see that, do you? Looks pretty good. I'll bring you back in a second. Just trying to put the wrong half on. So that has a little spot right there. It looks like for it to lock into. Here we go. That's more like it. And it's got to get close to the ramps. That feels pretty good. Then this goes on. Get in there with the key. You know, I'm going to launch this whole assembly right across the room. Huh? Work with me. Work with me, goose. Don't let me get the good hammer. Be a good place for a washer, huh? All right. Take a look at the back side of that. Yeah, that looks better. I'm better than that. <laughs> Come on, I tried. And again, this one, this is going to try to hold the belt all the way to the outer position, and then as the front one squeezes in as it revs up it wants to pull the belt to the outside and this one is just reacts to whatever tension that belt in uh is pulling and it drops down into this pulley so they kind of fight each other and the gear ratio changes as the front one goes from small to large the back one goes from large to small spinning the back one faster hence spinning the back tire faster as it's allowed all right let's get the motor on there and i i still think i have the wrong belt but uh let's go see if we can work with what we got this one I think it's supposed to be five ace, the older ones, and the newer ones are three quarters. And I have a three quarter belt, I think. There, there we go. Let's go. Plop two bolts in caddy corner of each other. Missing one. There it is. The other thing too is you guys see how our alignment is this way. Hopefully we're uh, <laughs> we're not even close. <laughs> Whoops, we got something wrong. I don't think that's gonna work for us. Either that one's gotta go in a ton, or this assembly's gotta go this way. Hmm, was there any difference with that other engine? I didn't think so. Let's go look. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're exactly the same. All the bolt holes look the same. Case looks the same. I know we have that one washer that's in there. Do you think this assembly needs to get spun around like that? Can we do that? Would that hurt anything? And then you wouldn't need the washer, right? Maybe I just have it on there wrong. Let's go spin that around, see if that'll work. What fun would it be if everything went right the first time, right? Let's go give that a couple of love taps. Pardon me, coming through. So we can get rid of that. It's gonna have to come up with some kind of spacer though because that's, it's already hitting the bolts. Actually, we could take those off. This was, what was on here? A 
There was a metal guard on here for a belt. Let's just go eyeball that real quick and see if that did anything for us. So this would now be the outer. All right? So that would be the outer. And then when you bolt it, you can put a big washer on it that would hold it. That's looking much more promising. Let's go plop that on there real quick. Let's go throw. Let's just go throw something in there to hold it real quick. And if they line up, which I think it's going to, yeah, we could fix the rest of it. Definitely say that is looking more promising. So a bolt or two in it. Get the claim its spot. Now it looks like it's too far the other way, but we could shim it. Okay. Well, we want. See the thing. What's weird is why I was kind of going the other direction. Maybe have the, no, I can't have the back one wrong. Is this is the movable part on this one, but this is the movable part on this one. You would think they would kind of be on the same side so the belt doesn't change angles. Hmm. I don't know. Let's go look. Uh, there's a clutch setup on the beaver upstairs, a little amphibious vehicle I put together. It's a, it's the modern one. It's not this older style one. Let's just go see how they're set up real quick. And back to my beaver. Be beaver? People. People? My beaver. I got everybody looking at my beaver. All right. What do we got? Yeah, so that's on the outside. So both of them are on the outside of that one. Which makes sense. You know, they're move together equally hmm let's go take a look on that back clutch see if we could flip that over i don't i don't think so though i think that's the way it was supposed to be i never took it off but you know that's not saying anything's wrong yeah hmm, hmm. i don't know we could try we could try taking this back apart again I don't think so. I don't think that's going to... I have a feeling this has a shoulder on it that holds it. Let's take it apart again. We'll see if this slides off of here. And we can flip the whole thing over. I could probably Google the topic real quick and we'll take a picture of what they got. Because it's not like it's lined up. Well, it's not like, yeah, it's, not like it's lined up. close you just look at that surface in that one but that's gonna push the, the belts gonna go way over here is that right and then this one will okay so this is gonna want when it rides up the belts gonna come over this direction when this spins this pulley is also going to go that direction. I don't know. I think maybe we should just kind of move forward with what we got. A couple of you are yelling at me right now. I can't hear you. Yeah, let's go throw a belt on there real quick and see if there's any chance of working. Nope, that sucks. That is not going to work for us. <laughs> yeah, so the... Hmm. 
I'm going to Google real quick uh, Rup mini bike clutches and see what pictures come up. See if we can see anything that uh, will help us make sense. So what I think is happening is the back clutch is the original one and the front one is a later edition. I think this is called a 20 and this one's called a 30. So it's a mismatch of parts and that's why it's not going to work. But it does look like the outer is what moves on this and then the inner is what moves on the other. So maybe we can kind of play around with it. I wish I had that other belt coming, the one that's the five ace. But maybe we can make this one work. Uh, maybe I'll just move that engine around. What do we need to do? So this has to come further away. We could fix that with putting a couple of shims behind it. And then that's a lot though. Let me uh, free the engine up. I'll move it over. I wonder if it'll line up to those holes right there instead of the sliding ones. Maybe somebody even drilled them for just such an occasion. So that drop that in. It actually doesn't look terrible. It's now it's a little too far the other way. I'm going to go take it apart. We'll get rid of these, these little spacers that are in here and uh, get these bolts out and get see if we can close up this gap a little bit more and if that will line up for us. It's better. Definitely better. And it also has a little bit of play in the belt too. You, you can't have it so it's right taut down against the uh, bushing that's in there. It'll cook it. Again, I think this is a little too fat for where it would normally sit. I think these would come together and rest and just maintain a position where this belt's so fat it still wants to, you know, I don't know if I can turn it. It's going to want to jump up out of that groove more. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll show you. Yeah, so this belt's kind of fat, so that's where it wants to rest, just like that. It won't, it's not going to stop until it tries being that fat out, and it's going to be pulling on that front pulley. And unfortunately, I think we're stuck until the other belt shows up. I don't know if I want to invest any more time trying to set it up to something. That may not work for us. I think the skinnier belt will still work in the front. You know, it's just, it'll take another second for it to squeeze in that much tighter on that belt. What a mismatch of crap, huh? <laughs> I can look real quick and see if I have any kind of belt that we can use to mock up. I don't think so. Now this belt's too long, but it's the 5 ace belt. You see how it sits even in the groove? That's the one I got coming. How's that going to fit up on there? I actually think that one will be okay because, you know, worst case, we can slot, we can slot them and make it do the same thing this one did or just to tweak the belt a little bit. You would think all the junk I collect. Wait for it. <laughs> I would have something, but I don't. Oh. It would be right in this area right here on the shorter ones. Well, none of those are going to work for us. So not saying that we can't move forward with something else, right? So let's go work on setting up the carburetor, making a manifold for that, and we'll wait for the belt to come in. We'll chase it. We got, you know, this front wheel, you can go do them. We'll fix up a bunch of other stuff and we'll just keep moving forward. One way or another, that engine is gonna drive that pulley. It just doesn't know it yet. So let's get that thrown back on there. We'll probably use the holes that were closer to what we needed, bolt it down, and we'll start trying to make a manifold for it. Sorry about that noise in the background. That is the heat, because it is winter. So this is the setup that was on one of these small engines. And of course, that's how it was set up. And this carb could actually run this way. This is one of the diaphragm carburetors. It doesn't have a float ball on it. Kind of can run any direction with that diaphragm. I'm not convinced that that's going to be any good and if I can get a carburetor kit for that. So I would like to try to set up a manifold that kind of comes straight out. And then we, if there, we have a bad carburetor, we just switch over to something else. But I think we maybe go with that for our preliminary. Let's just go pop, we'll get rid of the air cleaner. We'll pop 
the diaphragm out. We'll take a look at it, see if it's any good. I also like this one too, because it's got a separate air fuel mix, so we can kind of tweak it a little bit. For some of the modern carburetors, it's just preset. It's down about 19 degrees outside. I gotta thicken my blood up for winter. Still used to summer. I think we're going to 67 degrees in like three days. Now, unfortunately, this uh, carb it's got a diaphragm in it, and the diaphragm's hardened up over time. And if you can't get a replacement, you're kind of screwed. So, hopefully, we take this apart and it's pliable. If it's not pliable, I'm going to go look over in my stash. I seem to remember getting a carb kit for something similar to this. I'm not going to hold my breath. It's not a good sign if it doesn't even want to come apart. There we go. So I just stabbed it. It's got rust sitting in it. Does move a little. Damn it. So it pays that long fingernail. There we go. So this I'm kind of takes place of the float ball. It meters how much fuel is in there. And, and it's pretty stiff. That needs to be able to move back and forth fairly pliable. And it in turn, that's kind of like you whoops. That's like your needle and seat right there. That setup. Should be able to it was stuck for a second, but it's moving now. I mean, we could try it. Let's go get the screws out. So that was a half, one, one and a half. So one and three quarters. And that one. That's got a ton of rust on it. And this one. Forgot to count. <laughs> we'll figure it out. And we'll have a little bit of packing in there. There'll be a, a washer and like an O-ring. I'm gonna leave them alone for now. Real quick, I'm gonna go look at my stash and see if I have one of these. If we have one of these, we're golden. If not, it's gonna be questionable whether this is gonna run for us. Yeah. Not very good. Part of my stash. I thought one of these, I may have bought like extras of them. These pop right out. What's that right there? Looks a little big though, doesn't it? That might be a carp kit for it. <laughs> In stock. Usually what I try to do is, if I need one, I order two, at least two, while I'm doing it. Did something actually, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> now, if they're the same size. This would tell, wouldn't it? The bolt holes line up. Those holes line up. The plate on the back's a little different, but that's okay. I think we'll be okay with that. See how much, see how flimsy that is? You see how <laughs> not flimsy that is? Awesome. And I think we got all the little bits there's the needle and seat I was talking about. We got the O-rings for the seals. 
as long as they don't damage it. I'm going to go take the carb the rest of the way apart. We'll take the body, we'll throw it in the carb cleaner. We'll pop these out. I'm going to leave the Welch plugs in there. We'll just get rid of the rest of the crap that's on there. I think we might be able to have an operating carburetor. Maybe we can make a manifold too while this is uh, doing its thing. We can uh, probably take where the gaskets go. That's all we need, right, is the gaskets? Yeah. So this gasket and this gasket, those are the two mating surfaces we have. We can make some steel flanges and then try to weld a piece of pipe between them. That's the needle and seat coming out of it. It's got a spring that pulls it up. Definitely got some corrosion going on that too. O-rings petrified. Yeah. Come out in three pieces. Yeah, that's the other one. Looks like somebody hammered the crap out of the choke plate too. It's all bent up. Might just leave that alone. It's functioning. Maybe some somebody went too far that way and crushed it. The carbs in the ultrasonic cleaner. We need a flange like that. Too bad this wasn't steel. We just cut cut it right off and make what we want, right? And a flange like that. I seem to remember making something for uh, an oxygen sensor. I made a couple of flanges. Um, that I'm also thinking of uh, VW exhaust. The heat risers look very close to that. I'm going to go poke around a little bit, see if we can find something that's already made instead of us having to try to fabricate one. And they would look something like that. I have a feeling this is going to be... Oh, wait a minute. Are they the same? That might, that might work. Yeah, I made these up for all lawful purposes. Honest. <laughs> yeah. Actually, if that gasket fits on those. What about the other side? That one's slotted. We can, because we need that one too, right? That one's much smaller. We got one. Yeah. We can hack one of them off of there. Let's go take a quick look, like I said, that uh, the VW stuff. So we're going to want one of these. And see if that flange for a VW fits. Look something like that. Problem is the holes are offset too though. That's pretty close. Hmm. I'm not gonna cut this one out. This one's too good. See if I can find one. Hunting in my stash, I'm looking at this. I wonder if we could steal the yeah, it's a little small. See if we can find a piece of pipe that's got a curve in it, we could cut the section out that we need to make the angle while we're shopping we'll keep an eye out for that yeah. I don't want to take a good one but one of them's junk so with these these are VW this is what's called the heat riser heat comes up through here and it keeps the intake manifold from freezing you can blow air through them they're good yeah, that one's good. I'm not going to kill that one. The exhaust goes through them though, so they do clog up and kind of die. Hmm. Because the other side is the muffler side too, which is going to be this piece. That part right there is the same thing. But I don't want to kill a good muffler neither. You know, that's what I get for throwing rusty crapped out stuff out. <laughs> I'll find something. Thrill of the hunt. You ever get the feeling I've done this before? <laughs> yeah, so 
a tad fat. That's for like an eight horse. I was hoping I'd find a hunk of steel manifold connected to one of them. So the VW engine that we fired up that had really crappy cylinders has an intake manifold on it, but the preheat is rotted right through right there. So let's go cut that side off and we'll use that one. Start. I should cut both sides off of that. You see the artery, how much it's closing up. A little cholesterol build up there, huh? Looks like the makings of a intake manifold for me. We're gonna need the carb though. Maybe we'll finish cleaning the carb up, put that back together, and then we'll build from there. That started at 30 minutes. It's not really up there that it's been we're like 22 minutes in. I think we'll go with it. Quiet. Yeah. Usually I like to let them go longer than that, but not today. So, cleaned out the carb and going through the parts. This is that new needle and seat. Here's the old one. You can see how much further the pin sticks out of that one compared to this one. This one is meat, uh, meat is neat. <laughs> one more time. Missing the seat. There's like a little nylon seat that the needle pressed against. And it is not in there. I looked in the kit. I didn't think I dropped it. I looked around and I don't have it. I look in the old one. You can see it looks like there's one in there. Doesn't that hole look much bigger than that hole? Like something else should be in there and that would put it in the right location. Uh, so I'm like, well, now what do we do? We could probably either use the old one over and try to clean it up where I went looking back again and I found another kit. <laughs> and this one has not been opened. The other one I think was opened has their zipper on the top. This one's got the bag seal on top. So let's quickly go look at this one and see what this one uses. Yeah, see, it's got the same large hole. Let's go with them. There it is, right there. A little green. So I may have stolen it out of that kit for another machine. I don't know, but we have one. <laughs> Crisis averted. Yeah, sometimes certain machines definitely put up more of a fight than others. That's why I like to try to get them when they're complete. Even if they're all busted up and rotted and shot, at least you know what was there. You have something to go by where, I mean, you get something like this where it's a bunch of the parts are missing and swapped over. You don't. So that seal has to go in there. And the best thing to do that with is a drill bit, the back of a drill bit. You find the one that's close enough to it. And you push that down in, that, in there and seat it. And the other thing too, in the other one, the spring, the other kit, the spring was smaller. Let's see if this stuff matches up. Yeah. This one's more accurate, I think, to what we need to replace it with compared to the other one. All right, so I'm going to take a few minutes. We'll put that back together. There's really not much to it. It's essentially putting that seat back in the center, putting the two set screws on it. Putting that back on the top of it with the four screws. I know people are going to ask. So the groove goes in. So the, the needle is going to rest against this side of it. That's the smooth side. And like I said, we're going to take a, a drill bit works. Get one that's close. I have a, a, a pick that has a really close I don't want to lose this one. Let's get it started. I'm just going to push that down until it seats. There we go. 
and then that new needle can rest against that and should have a stick out a little bit more than that might not be down all the way it is As long as that diaphragm can push on that to open it, it should be fine. Yeah, got room to touch it. I was looking at the other one. Where's the other one? How much more stick out that one's got? Yeah, unfortunately, that setup is not going to work for us because the needle does not protrude far enough. out to ever get pushed off at stop and I'm looking at the two of them and that one's definitely got a little bit more room to it so I think we're going to end up cleaning this one up and this one goes through yeah and that's able to open and close don't know but I don't think the other setup is going to work for us at all I'm not quite sure what was going on there all those pieces were in the same package you would think that it would go together and she would protrude but she did not protrude don't lose parts <laughs> you'll launch it probably should have put that on first huh That's more like it. I gave it about a 50% success rate that that is going to do what it needs to do. But at least it opens and closes before you couldn't even push down on. This, this is how it came out. So I'm putting it back together with this orientation. That may or may not be correct. Somebody could have been in there before us and just like totally screwed it up and parts are not laying right. That it's supposed to flip over the other way and that little tab could fit down in between. I don't know the answer to that. But what I do know the answer to is I need to wash that and then we're going to set that back on and screw her in. So I, I do know they've st they stack the gasket sometimes on one side and sometimes on the other. And I don't quite know why. I'm sure it's for shimming and how much uh, fuel gets let into there. And also, this is more of like a very common on like a two-stroke setup. And again, it can kind of run in any position is, is what its benefit is. Whether this is going to work for us on this four-stroke, I don't know. I, I seem to remember these getting used in a four-strokes. And again, it, this was already on one of these engines that uh, we got. So... <laughs> we're gonna move forward with it it's definitely been hacked together you can see somebody kind of brazed something kind of linkage to there um, the flange setup on it is the same as you would find on a regular float ball carburetor so if this does not work for us then we'll go to just a regular float carb and uh, again that the flange will be the same so we'll be able to mount everything to it but I want to give this one a shot so that's the carbon that's built up and that is the flange that essentially is going to be mating to, to that. So we want roughly the bore to maintain that or else we're going to choke off how much is there. So let's see if we can get this flange itself opened up. That's how much carbon was on there. We're going to, we'll slice off the rest of the plumbing that's on there. We got a ways to go yet. Let's pick up the speed. I think my battery's dead. Yep.
don't have gaskets on them yet, but just have them bolted on. So we need to get a piece of pipe to make that carb sit right about there. As long as we can clear, actually, maybe we'll come back a little bit. We'll give the exhaust a little bit of room. Let's, um, because you can even kick it on an angle if you have to, too. Let's go see if we can find a piece of pipe that'll fit in there. We'll put that in the, its location just to claim its spot. Not that we're not gonna heat up and bend it and change it anyway, but let's just let it, let's just do that. It's like the only piece I have. And I can run that in there. Again, we can, we can cut that and change the angle. But let that claim its spot. Let's go on the other side with the carburetor. And again, I wanna leave room if we're gonna go with the, one of the other carbs. I'd like to try to get it right about, right about there. I think your leg would be out of the way. We put an air cleaner on it. Yeah, we claim the space behind it. I'm trying to think of what we got that has a bend. Maybe a bicycle handlebar. We can cut like the section out of that. Probably about the right diameter too, right? Let me go see what he got. We'll check here first. This is, this is like the, the land of the lost. That might. Maybe we can use that bend right there. Good more. What's that? That's gonna look a, that might be a little on the large side. That might do it. See if we could find some, something, maybe right in between those two. If not, we'll go back for that, that red. We could look upstairs too where some scrap bicycles are. Yeah, I don't see anything else over here. anything what's that right is that the other end of what we were looking at and there's a flange that we were <laughs> remember we're looking for a flange there's one on a muffler let's grab yes that's the other end of that, hand that handlebar let's go see if that's gonna that might work because I got to open up that hole a little bit more yet. It's still a little shy of it. Uh, this is, I think, Harley handlebars. And then there's, so there's two different sizes. I think one's seven eighths and one's three quarters. I'm guessing at that. Ow! That one hurt. Yeah, that was thick too. All right. So we'll go with this, and we're quickly gonna look upstairs to see if there's any uh, bicycle, maybe a little bit thinner. Bicycle junk. That's not bad right there. Right on top too. Do I wanna cut up a good set of handlebars? <laughs> Some of you say, that's, is that's a good set of handlebars? Yeah, these are a little smaller than the motorcycle ones. These are bicycle ones. This is more the size we need, I think. I think we just kind of like eyeball it. So we know we're coming out like that, right? So maybe we'll nick it. We can always shorten it up later. We'll cut it there. And we're going to want it so it's level. And on the angle out, I would say right about there. And we could go a little, a little further out again if we need to. We could shorten it up. It's a little harder to go the other way. You agree? Because yeah. we could rotate it to get the, the correct angle that we want. So we'll cut this one off. We'll cut this one proud. And then we'll sneak up on it. All right. So if we went, I would say, that's almost true. Can we flip it around? do anything worse it looks like it gets us away from the exhaust a little further i think that's going to get in the way of the pull start though right by the time it's got an air cleaner on it and yeah, it's getting kind of far away you can shorten her up quite a bit too you don't want to go too long on the intake it changes your torque curve and your horsepower 
I say we go with that. The angle's good, but I think we need to get rid of about, about that much of it. That'll get us that much closer in. I think that should be about right. All right, so a little like that. Probably can go a little shorter, huh? We spin it around, does that help us? Yeah, actually, I kind of like that a little bit better. Again, that pulsar. Uh, plus, you know, when your legs on the, are coming off the seat in this area with the air cleaner, I think we can even afford to maybe knock. Let's go and knock about that much more. We'll just use the bend. So that's a that, third time's the charm. Are we on our third, fourth. We are going to want that so that the carb is sitting straight. I wonder if we should probably weld it to the carb flange first. Then we'll just rotate it to where it's level. Right about there looks good, huh? Let's give a, quick, a couple of quick witness marks. We'll give a where they were. Yeah. How good are we on that one? Kind of crappy. <laughs> yeah, so we'll do our best to center that one. We'll get a couple of tacks on it and then we'll bring it back over to the bike. We'll tack it on the bike. If we don't like it, we'll pop it off and we'll try it again. Looks like it's a hair like that. I'm trying to see how I am centered on that flange. I, I could tweak her a little bit too, you know? Oh, the carburetor actually tweaks. Got some room in it, good. So enough room to get it. Yeah, that's a level. I gotta bolt it up, a couple of gaskets in there. Again, still not sure if that carb's gonna work or not, but I think now is a good time. Let's go get a fuel supply hooked up to the input and uh, give her a couple of tugs, see if she'll go on that. And that's our setup, <laughs> for now, anyway. I'm gonna give it a little extra idle speed. And then we can back it off from there. Let's see if anything happens. The pulsar sounds horrible. Let's give her a little bit of a prime. I think what happens is, there's a few one. On a two stroke, it's got like a pulse that kicks back and that's probably what fires that diaphragm. Get in there, get. If it just runs and dies. Fire! <laughs> More fire.
shaking this up to death. The noise was the clutch. I for, we forgot to deal with the uh, the clutch that was rubbing on the bolts. So that's what all that racket was. It'll run on that carb though. That's a good sign. <laughs> it definitely loosened up the uh, the bolt on that too that we were talking about. I think I might have missed a shot there a little bit. Sorry about that. We can just get rid of the clutch for now. Yeah, I was rubbing on them. Let's get rid of that for now because that's not going to be able to tighten up uh, against those. Let's get the bolts in the motor and crank down real good. So, so I was waiting for the engine to fall completely off, but and I was going to let it happen. I'm like, well, wait a minute. The fuel line's connected to it, and that's really going to make a mess. All right, let's go fire it up again, and then we're going to try and dial in that air fuel mix. It was shaking so bad, it was hard to even kind of hold on to. So uh, let's give her another shot. Fire it all. get the idle down low enough I do know that throttle plate was a little beat up she wasn't hitting anything I think we can get it it's good right now we're not even on it the screws backed out so far Might be having a fuel delivery issue too. A bit of air in that line. I think we can get it. I should probably throw the. No, is that going to be worse? <laughs> I'll be trying to dial them in. Where's that muffler? We just shove that right on there for now. And yeah, I might direct a little bit of the heat away from us. Let's try it again. See what it sounds like too. Fire up for me. The black smoke that came out of it. That sounds better. the idle circuit is going to be a little on the screwy side. I'm not sure which one's the high or the low. I'm going to go play with them a little bit, see if I can dial in an idle. And uh, if not, maybe we'll switch over to one of the other carbs and see how that does. I lit myself up. <laughs> That'll wake you up. I don't know. I, the other thing too is I want to take a little bit of sealer 
and kind of seal around these right here. I might have a slight intake leak and I might have a slight intake leak on these gaskets right here. Yeah, I just threw whatever I had in on them. It's close, but I wonder if we might have a little bit better luck with just like a regular snowblower carburetor. I might go try one of those. I mean, that's what I mean by a snowblower carb. Very common one. Let's go try putting that one on there. Again, the problem with this is it doesn't have any air fuel mixes on it. The older ones did, but this one doesn't. So let's see if this does anything for us. idle down very well though. I think I got an intake leak. So uh, spray it down with something. I definitely got an intake leak, so that's what I got to go deal with. That's why it's not idling well. Uh, I don't know, maybe that car brake even seems to suit us a little bit better. It's a little large for this engine. That's made for like an eight horse. This is only three, so it may have a, an issue where it bogs a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm waiting on the belt, and again, we'll take those intakes apart. I'll make some good gaskets up for them. So the ones I shaved, the hard ones I shaved off with a razor blade. <laughs> and then we can get up with setting up once we get that belt in where the engine needs to be comparatively and how that clutch gets set up and we got ourselves a belt this is a five ace wide belt this is the one that should uh, normally be on the bike when it was new back in 1970s and it looks like it has enough room for the front clutch pulley to go fit around and we still have some adjustment with the engine so let's con continue on let's see if we can get this thing buttoned up and get that back tire to spin from firing up the motor and for the first thing what we're going to do is we'll get rid of these two bolts because the clutch was kind of running into it there's studs or spacers behind it that have these two sticking out too far let's get those out of there and try to find some shorter bolts and get that hardware sucked in yeah they're too long and one good thing about having several engines, those look like they'll do just fine. We'll throw these back in their place. I think the biggest thing is now is left to right. It looks like it clears everything. Just go throw it together and we'll see how we line up. I think the engine's gonna have to come towards us somewhat though. How's that tension look too? We could probably go forward a little bit on that engine also. We just need enough so that when it's idling, it doesn't wanna try to drive drive the belt yeah, it's in all the way it's just mocked up I think we got a bolt or two sticking in the fixed factory position I just kind of want to see it really doesn't look too bad my only concern is again the clutch they're not a match set so when this one goes to shrink up this one is going to move this way this one is going to move the back one is going to move this way so i think the belt might 
rack on us a little bit. I guess the best thing, we just fire it up and we see what it does. I don't know what else we can do to kind of get around it. We could flip that front clutch around. Hmm. So this point's going to stay the same, fixed, and this point's going to stay fixed. But what happens when the belt moves? <laughs> we shall see. All right, let's go get some gas going to it. We'll fire it up again. Get that back tire to stop. Give it a little bit of choke. Guess we should have checked to make sure the nut was tight on the back, huh? Well, hopefully we'll go find all those pieces. It looked okay. I need, I was trying to get a shriek shot down on it. I want to see how the belt tracked one way or another. But it looked like it went up in the top gear fairly decent. I'm going to go get all my pieces back. See if we can find them all. Found everything but the key. But I got more of those. Take that. Well, I think we just wing it with the belt like it is, and we move on to trying to get it to run a little bit better, and then we'll cinch down the engine. The intake manifold, the gaskets are leaking real bad on it. So I'm gonna go around, we'll pop them off, make up some gaskets for them, and try to reseal that back up. That way it should just kind of idle and do what it's supposed to do and rev. So all it really takes is a piece of gasket paper and a ball peen hammer. And you use the round part of the ball peen hammer to make the uh, line cut all the way around. And you get one perfectly cut gasket when you're done. Just pop out the little holes. That's actually some sticky back if you wanted to stick it to it. But if you're, if you're good, if you're not trying to dance around too much and you can hold it, just walk your hand around it like I did, not let it kind of shift around on you, you'll be able to get it without that. One more to do on the other side. I think we're good.
Got that original two-stroke carburetor back on there. Now that I did the intake manifold. Let's go see if that performs any better now. If not, we'll go with that other one. But I want to give this one a shot. The choke's on. fine line where it will run on the high side. I think next is fixing the pull start. <laughs> It's going to back out on the low side. It's in too far. Let's go with something like that. Well, I know a lot better. <laughs> that tire is so sticky, or she wants to stick to the bench. 
It literally, <laughs> in 10 seconds, did that. I want to get the nubs off, right? I, maybe the other carburetor seems, uh, sounds like it run, ran a little bit better. Probably going to go swap that one out. I think that might be our better bet. We, I could dial it in. It's close. We still don't have an air cleaner on it, too, so you have to kind of dial it in with that also. But uh, I'm going to go swap over the other one one more time. We'll pick the best of the two. Look how much you pulled that chain forward on that sprocket. That probably wasn't helping things neither. I don't have the keeper on the right side. That thing I should have put on the other side to hold the wheel from getting pulled forward. I done screwed up. And with the snowblower carburetor. Let's give her some choke. See what we get. <laughs> A fat lip. That one's got a funky idol to turn up. That's hot. How slow it'll go. It's gonna die. I think it's about as slow as we're gonna go. <laughs> Bell's gotta break in too. I think that's pretty good. I, I got as far as I wanted to get. I wanted to get the power to the back wheel. Carbs, still up in the air what carb I want to use. I think we can get an air cleaner on it. We'll try it down. They all got a flat spot right up off of idle. Probably gonna die if I try giving it some. Rips pretty good. Curious to see how it does in the trails with a load on it, you know? All right. <laughs> That's coming together pretty good. I got a lot to do yet, but at least we got power to the back wheel. We still got uh, exhausting route bolt the motor down in a good location, get the air cleaner set up, throttle set up, clean the gas tank out, shocks need to be addressed, front wheel doesn't even have a axle in it, it has whatever this thing is that we just shoved in there to hold it, <laughs> it's stuff in place, but I guess that's going to be for another video guys. Right now I'm happy with this, I'm, glad. I'm happy you guys are hanging out with me for this long too, so until the next one, I'll see you then, later, bye. Alright, one last start, I turned the idle up just a little bit, want to see how it 
new covers, and a pull start fix. Be a little bit of fuel delivery problem too. If that float ball might be running low, not sure. 